After reviewing the Corsair 4000D last week, it finally made sense to me why it was being so heavily recommended, why everyone was buying it, why it's just so popular, and I feel like I summed it up perfectly with just one sentence. This feels like a premium case that has had some expensive extras removed, as opposed to a cheap case with a load of RGB fans added to bump up that price. The Corsair 3000D, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Unfortunately, this is a cheap case with some nice RGB fans. Or is it, in fact, somewhere in between? It was once a premium case that had some things removed, but then Corsair thought, hey, let's remove even more stuff and sell it at the same price with a new name. At the very least, if you take anything from this video, it is to check out my video all about the 4000D first before making your purchase. And during this review of the Corsair 3000D, I'll be pointing out many reasons why. The Corsair 3000D, for all intents and purposes, is a Corsair 4000D. It's literally the same chassis, but Corsair has taken nearly everything we loved about the 4000D, and from what I can see, quite literally just thrown it away. Removable SSD caddies? Gone. Interior cable bar? Gone. Front USB-C port? Gone. Vertical GPU mount? Gone. Cable management channel? Gone. Easy to remove front panel and dust filter? Gone. Tiny bit of plastic trim at the front that covers your hard drives? Gone. Side panels that stay clicked in without thumb screws? Gone. Honestly, we're not off to a good start here. Of course, there are plenty of other great case options around the £100 mark, other than the two options I've mentioned from Corsair. The Lancol 216 from Liam Lee, the NZX DH5 Flow, the Fractal Pop Air, or even the Cooler Master TD500 V2. Hopefully in the future, we'll cover some of these cases as these are all good options with multiple fans, plenty of airflow, and somewhere between good and great cable management. Some of these cases have unique features to make building easier, like removable panels or special fans directing air at the GPU. The Corsair 3000 the RGB Airflow has none of these features and honestly I didn't even want to build in it after taking it out of the box and just seeing everything that had been shaved away but obviously I did as there's still plenty of this video left. Those three AL120 fans better be phenomenal. Wait they're just £35 for three fans? So you could just buy the 4000D for £79, add these fans in black or white, and you've got the complete package for £115. £15 more for so many quality of life features, and still £30 less than the 4000D RGB airflow. And you'd have even better fans and an exhaust fan. But the worst part is the base model without the RGB fans is the exact same price as the 4000D with all the good features removed. I'm not sure what's worse, how much Corsair are charging for the 4000D with RGB fans, or how much the base model 3000D costs without them. Prices are literally all over the place. Anyway, I'll get on with the actual review of this case now. So let's start with the exterior of the case, and this is perhaps the strongest part of the Corsair 3000D as the dimensions of frame are identical to the 4000D. The only difference being is that the 3000D is 9mm longer at 462mm versus 453mm on the 4000D, likely due to that all new design on the front panel. The updated look is fine, but it's definitely cheaper, with the perimeter of the front panel being completely plastic, then the middle section is the steel we expect to see. One massive thing I don't like is that the dust filter on the front isn't removable. Well easily removable. You can't just slide it out or pop it out and clean it. The mesh sheet is clamped all the way around that perimeter. I'm really disappointed to see this as I can picture somebody trying to give it a good clean and just end up ripping that filter. Removing the front panel isn't very delicate. You need to get your hand underneath the front in the little gap and give it a strong pull, which is exactly the way you'd expect it to be done on a case around the 50 to 60 pound mark. Taking it off though does give a much better look at the included AR120 fans. And let's be honest, these are decent fans. And the one thing I really appreciate is that they're Corsair fans, but they don't use their typical proprietary connector or a Commander Pro. They just connect to your motherboard like any normal fan would do. They do include a splitter for the RGB connections, but not for the PWM fan connections, which is kind of ridiculous, as they cost about £3. Of course, they clearly couldn't afford that after all the other cost-cutting measures they'd already made to this case. It's kind of ironic, really. I fault them for not having splitters or a hub, but then also praise them for not using their default hub. Somewhere in the middle would have been nice from Corsair if companies like Antec or Lee and Lee can include them in cheaper cases. Why can't a mega company like Corsair do it? Looking at the rest of the case, it's all pretty familiar. We have a removable dust filter and the bottom of the case and the magnetic one up top. This filter is exactly the same as the one on the 4000D, so it does affect your thermals negatively, so do bear that in mind. In front of that filter, we have our power and reset switches, as well as the familiar headphone and microphone combo jack. The USB ports maintain that nice yellow look, which I appreciate, but if you've noticed anything different, it's that we have two USB-A ports and no USB-C. Some people might prefer that, but I personally would much rather have one of each, 
or even more. It's just another unfortunate sign of Corsair cutting costs over the 4000D. Three of the case is pretty standard stuff with your usual seven expansion slots, all of which removed with unscrews, which is nice. Fortunately, no super cheap one-time use covers that you have to snap off. Where the vertical GPU slots were on the 4000D, we now just have a solid piece of steel replacing that. If I'm honest, I don't really think losing the slots is really a big deal as the placement was too close to the glass anyway. But I did like the added benefit of having more of that triangular mesh to allow heat to easily disperse. Let's move inside the 3000D and get a better look at what's going on here. Getting inside is fairly straightforward. Just loosen the captive yellow and black thumb screws at the rear and if the panel doesn't just fall off by itself, the lightest push should be enough. The 4000D does this so much better. The thumb screws felt more like decoration or peace of mind as the panels just clicked into place before you needed to tighten the screw. The panels on the 3000D can quite literally just fall off if you loosen the screws. So be prepared when you do so. This isn't uncommon on cheaper cases, but not what you'd expect to see at £99 for this RGB version. Once you are inside, it looks a little bit devoid of a soul, like a once great hero that has had its armor and reputation stripped away. There's literally nothing here. There's no cable bar to subtly hide the cables as they wrap around the side of the motherboard tray, nor has it been replaced with some cheap cable grommets. From the front, the whole of the inside just looks unfinished or incomplete. It looks like a newly released game from EA. Though I guess one positive is that there's still plenty of cutouts at the top and bottom of the motherboard for all the locations you'd want to access. One thing I will add is that if you opt for the black version with its much darker glass panel and black interior, this will probably be less of an issue for you as most interior cables are black and they'll blend in nicely with the rest of the interior. The only new thing inside here is the ability to mount fans above that PSU shroud to blow air into the GPU. But I personally find these a little bit pointless as they'll just be restricted by the PSU itself or the hard drive cage or all the cable clutter that you have to stuff down there. Oh boy, now it's time for the cable management section. I described the 4000D as simple yet effective, but if we move around to the back of the motherboard on the 3000D, it only gets worse. In the 4000D, you could do it as you go, one cable at a time, nice and easy. Once the PC was built and I wanted to tidy up my cables around the back of the 3000D, I was stumped. All of the good cable tie points were already in use for the front IO cables, and I didn't want to drag my cables past the giant gaping hole in the case and then bring them back again to plug into the motherboard. So I did what I would recommend other people do, and that's to make your own cable management channel. I used three of these self-adhesive clips, albeit they're nearly four years old, so the adhesive isn't fantastic, but I'm sure a brand new pack would hold up a lot better. They cost about 13 pounds for 50, so about 26 pence each, and they do the job perfectly. You could even do it cheaper just using some adhesive cable tie bases and the cable ties that come in the accessories box. But I find the clips much more PC building friendly as it's easy to add an extra cable if needed. Down the bottom is where you'll likely be stuffing a lot of cables as you'll have nowhere else to hide them. So it's good that Corsair at least retained the removable hard drive cage. Though once again, the thumb screws were incredibly over tightened and I did need a pair of pliers once again to loosen them up. As far as internal dimensions, radiator support, maximum cooler lengths are all concerned, they're all identical to the 4000D because, well, it's literally the same case. I'll have them all on screen for you so you can read them for yourself, but there's just not much else to say here. Physically, it's the same as a case that was released in September 2020, and I'm struggling to find reasons why anyone would buy this 2023 release over that one. So I guess we need to turn our heads to performance. And this is where the 3000D finally makes sense. If I'm honest, I wish I had the base non-RGB version as well, or just a pair of SP120 Elite fans to recreate how that stacks up. But I don't, and I don't want to spend £26 on two rather underwhelming fans to try it out. So what we can compare is how well the 3000D RGB airflow compares in a variety of different tests, and then see how they compare to the 4000D airflow. So let's jump into it. After a 15 minute stress test with all the fans at 100%, the CPU maxed out at 76.7 degrees and a GPU topped out at 60 degrees. Adding a Corsair M120 fan to the rear for exhaust saw our CPU drop by 1.1 degrees and our GPU by 0.6 degrees. Removing the top dust filter did see our CPU hit a maximum of 75.2 degrees and the GPU hit 59.7 degrees. So if we have a 120mm fan equipped for exhaust and remove that top dust filter, we get the best of both worlds, with our CPU topping out at 74.2 degrees and our GPU at 59.1. Overall, we dropped our CPU temperatures by 2.5 degrees, but the GPU is only about a single degree cooler. Honestly, these are pretty good results, likely down to how well the AR120 fans perform. They offer similar CFM to the deep cool fans I fitted in the 4000D last week, but much higher static pressure, which may have helped when both sets of fans are so close to the dust filters and mesh front panels. As a result of this, in our best case scenario with the 4000D, the CPU is 1.6 degrees cooler in the 3000D, and the GPU is 1.4 degrees cooler, also 
in a 3000D. One major downside to this though is the noise that these fans make. They're not just loud, they sound horrible at maximum RPM. It doesn't sound like a constant flow of air. It's a horrible, annoying, loud, droning noise which is difficult to tune out. Of course, we shouldn't need to rock our case fans at 100%, and at lower RPMs, they're much more tolerable. Of course, they are PWM fans, unlike the DC fans found in both RGB and base versions of the 4000D, which is a good thing. I'll leave it up to you to decide what you think about how they sound though. So to conclude, I think the 3000D RGB airflow is a truly average case that you really shouldn't buy. I think the RGB version is much better value than the base version, as the base version comes in at £79, and it's the exact same price as the 4000D, with the only benefit being that the fans are PWM controlled. But they're still incredibly weak case fans regardless, and will want replacing as soon as you can afford it. So absolutely, do not buy the base version, and buy the 4000D instead. The RGB version makes a bit more sense, as it's technically about £45 cheaper than the 4000D RGB airflow, but it's only £15 cheaper than a 4000D base version, equipped with some AR120 fans. Alternatively, you could say the RGB version has £35 worth of fans, and the base version has £25 worth of fans, so it should only cost £10 more, and I think an £89 price point for the RGB version would be much more appealing for consumers. But I honestly can't see the £79 and £99 price points remaining long term, as it just doesn't make sense, and the base version should realistically come in at around maybe £50 to £69, as it's just a 4000D with so many features missing. So if you're truly into cutting costs and want good performance out of the box, then that is where the 3000D RGB airflow makes more sense. But if you value all or any of those eight things I listed at the very beginning of the video, like the front USB-C, the included cable management, or easy to clean dust filter and front panel, then I strongly implore you to grab the older and much better overall package that is the 4000D Airflow at just 79 pounds. Then upgrade that as you wish. Honestly, my biggest issue with a 3000D is its cost and the way it stacks up in comparison to the 4000D. So if you're watching this in several months or years time, and it's significantly cheaper than the 4000D, and you don't care about any of those extras, it's not a terrible case, but just not one that I can recommend today. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of the video. What do you guys think? Have I been a bit too harsh? Have I missed the point? Or if you'd like me to check out any other PC cases, let me know down in that comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to get subscribed. And if you're interested in checking out the Corsair 3000D or any extras I may have mentioned, make sure you check the description for my Amazon affiliate links down below. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Cheers.